What's up, guys? This is the Smith Squad podcast, but before we get into it, um, there's actually supposed to be a giveaway on this video, but I didn't realize YouTube changed their terms of service that you're not allowed to do giveaways now, but I still wanted to give back to you guys. So I decided what I do, this would be easier, is how this is going to work is there's going to be a uh, a Twitter giveaway basically because uh, I'm still allowed to do that obviously just to give back to you guys so what you can do is go over to my Twitter there's gonna be a link down in the description you can follow me and probably Saturday or Sunday I will tweet out a um, like one of those codes for the the um, PlayStation Store and uh, that'll be good for you guys so if you want to get on that it's a ten dollar code to the PlayStation Store just go over link down in the description follow me on Twitter and I will tweet it out um, I'll probably be, do, be doing an Xbox Live one in the future, uh, but I have a, I'll be getting a PlayStation, uh, $10 PlayStation one for you guys uh, very soon, and uh, I'll tweet that out, and the winner will get it. So like I said, let's go down, follow me on Twitter, and uh, it should be Saturday, I'm hoping, maybe Sunday. But anyways, guys, uh, let's get into the podcast. Aiden Roy, Aiden Roy is here, the dope Pope. What's up, man? What's up, everybody? <laughs> I guess I don't get a reply to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Aiden is another, actually just a friend from school. He's uh, an interesting guy. I've had some very weird conversations with him before, and I thought he'd be a, a cool guest on the podcast. So, what's up? Not too much, man. And thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> first thing <laughs> we decided we thought we'd talk about is kind of this inside joke that we've had, I think, for, I don't know, like, it must be at least two years now. I think so. I yes. think it was the beginning of grade, t- well, like halfway to grade ten, or so. We'll, we'll jump to the point. Patrick is a virgin, <laughs> and now there's going to be a whole bunch of people here that think that is true. Well, no, actually, there's going to be people that know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so Patrick is actually waiting for marriage, and <laughs> then they're going to consummate and have all that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So how? I should ah, oh, dude. I, this is so this is so hard to explain. But basically, I think it went all the way back to grade, like I said, grade ten. Um, and me and my girlfriend, we were, all, we were all kind of starting to lose our virginity. Yeah, and stuff, so it, was, it was a big deal. It's kind of that time where everyone's like, you know, there and stuff. <laughs> and um, I was with the girl that I, the same girl that I'm with now, and uh, I like it probably. I think I just lost it like maybe a month previously. And I think you had asked me, um, like, like have, have, had I yet? And I said, yes. <laughs> and then you and Andrew, who's another friend of us was like, uh, like, Oh, that's too bad. Cause it would be funny if you still work. Cause we can make fun of you or something. <laughs> and I think that's just where it started from. Yeah. Is that, pretty much yeah, right that's pretty accurate i think and we kind of just like never let it go you know yeah so like it's first started out like oh the that's a verge and most people i guess because at that time like people weren't really sure so it's like oh whatever you know like that's a reasonable time but <laughs> yeah now like i've been with my girlfriend for four years and this year um it was like our last year of football and i i pretty sure you managed to convince the entire football team <laughs> that I actually was. Yeah, yeah. I looked into like straight into everybody's eye. I was just like, yeah, he's a virgin. <laughs> and they're like, really? Yeah. And then that's when you break out the religious thing and then they like totally believe it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So and what's even funnier is you'd be like you'd be like, oh Pat's a virgin or or you know, like you'd make some <laughs> joke about it and everybody would laugh. And we don't have like the coolest football team. No, no. A lot of them are definitely virgins. <laughs> yeah, that's where it's funny because it's like, uh, you know, you guys are like, like maybe they feel good because they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not the only one. And it's like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> but yes, I, I like, honestly, I think a good, like maybe 10% of the grade 12s at CEC think that yeah, like, yeah, there's I've a lot people of people. Ask me. Yeah, there's like, a lot of people. Month really yes i'm not gonna name any names because partly i don't really remember but yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 so funny but at the same time it's like really embarrassing <laughs> i say just own it man just rock with just it. own Someone it asks you yeah man i'm waiting till marriage <laughs> people are so surprised because like when you say like yeah i've been with her for four years and they're yeah. like what 
I think that's another thing too, because like, why would you be in a relationship for that long? Like, typically at our age, things dissolve. But yeah. also commend you for that for having such a lengthy relationship. That's uh, pretty hard. Thank man. you. Yeah, it it seems like a lot of our friends are in long relationships. Actually, it's kind of weird. Because yeah. yeah, that's true. Like, uh, like I guess I shouldn't name names, but. That's true. <laughs> uh, like Lucas and Ali, they've been together oh, for yeah, a long yeah. time. It's but a nice couple too. Yeah, they're they're nice people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm a virgin, proud of it. And I'm not. <laughs> and praise the Lord, praise Jesus. I guess thank you for keeping me pure. Yes, very pure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you took some Alpha Brain before we yes. started this off. So I'm a, I'm a skeptic of Alpha Brain. Are you? I'm, yeah, so like I've taken three, and that's when I've noticed something. But whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, and like the only other times that I've noticed something, but every time is when I go take them right before sleep, and like you oh. have these crazy dreams, and you'll really wake up from the next day. Yeah. Everybody says that. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I'll look at the ingredients. <laughs> oh, you got it right there. Perfect. Jeez, uh, I should know this. I think it's called like choline or something. Yep. But yeah, yep. You, you, oh, okay, that's what it is. And yeah, it makes your dreams crazy and vivid and you remember them. Really? Yeah, that's my favorite part because often I don't remember my dreams. No, I know. You have like the most amazing yeah. dream and then it's just over and it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, because I've been like debating buying a whole bunch of stuff from the website that sells it, which is on it. Um, on it.com, O N N I T. Oh God, I feel like I'm doing a podcast for Joe Rogan right now. <laughs> we are not sponsoring on it. Ten <laughs> percent off any and all supplements. Use yeah. the code word. <laughs> um, but uh, like, they have some really cool stuff there. Yeah, that definitely. People, a lot of people say is um, is very helpful, and I don't know if it really is. But I mean, There's definitely some things are. Have you tried anything else from there? Uh, I've actually not from there, but I've like gotten like uh, the Costco brand kind of stuff. Okay. And I got five HTP, and it's like what they use for uh, new mood. Okay, yeah. And uh, it's it's sweet. Like it'll change your day around, kind of thing. Really. If you pick up in the morning. Really. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. What is that? Because I like I said, Joe Rogan always talks about that stuff too. Uh, it's uh, geez, I should really know this, but um. It like works with your serotonin and kind of like stimulates the growth or something. I'm not a brain scientist, so it's <laughs> probably not a good uh, explanation. But yeah, that's essentially what it does. Yeah, there's uh, Alpha Brain, New Mood, and um, Shroom Tech Sport. I think right. and I'm really yeah, interested in that one too, because apparently yeah. it makes your like aerobic capacity and stuff just phenomenal. Yeah. So do you know why it's called Shroom Tech? No. Like, like, does it have an affiliation with shrooms? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's not like actual like magic mushrooms, but it's um, sure. It's I think, oh, cordyceps mushrooms. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've, I've heard that on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it would be sh shrooms. That would probably not help when you're exercising. <laughs> Whoa, man! <laughs> Look, I'm going so fast, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Um. Free, like on it though is such an awesome website i right. just like everything about it it just is so cool like it's all about like like i think their thing their slogan is like human optimization yes and like i'm so about that like just taking like certain pills and things that just make you like function super awesome yeah like they've got everything from like weight equipment too and yeah you know, supplements everything yeah um it's all healthy too like no side effects kinds of stuff exactly yeah which is um because i mean there's some stuff like like energy like like for example alpha brain it's kind of like i guess it's a stimulant would you say uh no I, I would say it's totally not a stimulant oh really just because like stimulant is a pretty uh like it's a pretty chemical reaction like caffeine or even meth or Adderall <laughs> Ritalin <laughs> that things. escalated quickly <laughs> caffeine, no, to, caffeine meth. to meth <laughs> but like that's the two sides of the spectrum kind of thing. yeah but those actually have kind of like an effect on the brain and your body right in different areas kind of thing yeah yeah but I'm, like I said I'm I'm not a doctor <laughs> so so what did like when you said you you took three like does it like help you focus make you more alert or what 
Yeah, I th- like I was a little sleepy before this, and I also took some caffeine before this in the form of wake ups, also <laughs> sponsored by this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a, well, I, it is a drug, but it sounds like a hardcore drug when you say doing wake, wake ups, ups, bro. But it actually just has like a rooster as its logo, so uh, yeah, it's just it's caffeine total, pills. Totally harm- harmless, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think caffeine pills are something that I'm surprised more people don't take. Yeah. Because when, yeah. you, when you look at the amount of people out there who drink coffee every day, and it's it's weird how coffee is like, like you never say like, I'm drinking coffee, I'm doing drugs. <laughs> but you are. You, you are. are. <laughs> and like, you know, if it was any other drug, like, like what is, you know, like a, a, an a addict is you wake up and you need it. Wow. That's right? an interesting perspective. I know. Right. And. It's like weird when you start thinking about that, like all your teachers at school who are just like <laughs> chugging addicts. down McKillop or yeah. chugging down coffee. I was going to say McKillop, you know. Yeah, Mawinney too. Mawinney, yeah. Um, he like, it's like, whoa. Like it, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like, it is a drug addiction. It's true, but it works for him because he's like on the point all the time. Well, know? exactly. Yeah. And it is, you know, it's like socially acceptable and it's not like, you know, you're going into school on meth every day and just whacked out and it's not going to kill you but yeah. it is a drug and people don't look at it like that i guess and if you're taking it in a pill form like you do <laughs> do people ever like judge you about that well actually i try and like advocate uh like the use of wake ups like i've gotten a few of my friends on it okay because uh, it's like a lot cheaper like one pill is essentially like 10 cents like a really? bottle of 100 of them cost about 10 bucks oh wow and so that's about like a hundred coffees so you're saving like ninety dollars damn yeah because if you're getting a coffee every day that's at least a dollar yeah there you go so probably maybe 150 or something and it it takes so much longer to consume yep and there may be calories in that if you're trying to lose weight or whatever so yeah for sure like i use them a lot for sport too so like i couldn't have a big belly full of coffee you know exactly yeah i never thought about that Yep, so like that's why I always took them before football games and practices even. Right, because I remember, I think I, it was my mom I told, I was like, yeah, I just mentioned like somehow, I was like, yeah, I think it's like Aiden has like caffeine pills, because I think you gave me one day, one, one day for football yeah, practice, yeah. and she's like, oh, you shouldn't be taking those, and I'm like, well, why not? It's just the same as a coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's actually less. I just took one usually. Usually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> usually, yeah. I mean, I guess like, you could probably go crazy and take like 10 and you'd like die. But yeah, you know, it's if you're not, as long as you're not a stupid person, like it's totally, it's totally, I think smarter. Yeah. Before a couple of games, like the most I ever took was four, which is 400 oh milligrams. My God. Which is about like three coffees. Yeah. And uh, like, it made me so like jittery and amped up, but like, it was so good. I think it was the Citadel game. And I'm oh. like, I played fucking good that game. That was I, I don't remember that game, dude. Oh, I, oh really? I, you got a concussion? Yeah, and yeah. no one, like, whenever, like, people said about concussions, like, oh, um, you know, it's, it's like, you'll know when you get one. Right. That's bullshit. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, like, when they told me I had one, like, I was so... Oh, yeah, you I'm got sure, one, too. You know? Yeah. yeah, and like they made me stay off for like two weeks, and I was like, "All right, let's go back on. I don't give a shit anymore." Yeah, but yeah, I had no idea. I was like, like the whole first half of that game, I didn't really know what was going on, and then it was like at halftime. I remember like talking to Jake, and he's like, "Dude, you like you're you're kind of good, but like you're doing some really weird shit out there." Like almost like he kind of said it like you're not using your head. You're just playing on like instincts or something. Right. Which kind of makes sense if you think, cause like, like I said, I really, I really don't remember that half and I can remember like certain parts of it. It's not like it was not there, but everything was just really weird. And dude, yeah. concu- like concussions sucked. And plus we were getting shit on. Yeah. <laughs> what oh. was the score? Was it 52, nothing or no, 52 nothing. It was, I don't think, I think it was 45. <laughs> Oh, damn. Yeah, that's the other thing is I forgot to say is during the game, I didn't like grasp that we were losing. Right. It, yeah. <laughs> to me, because like I was so out of it, it felt like it was like some like weird setup thing where we go out on the field, they score a touchdown on us, 
and then I go off the field. I wait two plays for our offense to to get oh. you know shut down, and then I go back out. But I wasn't even grasping that we were losing. I was like, okay, this is just how this is going to go, and I'm just going through the yeah. motions of life here. Yeah, I, I know that feeling because, like, I was on all the special teams, right, except for just one of them. Right. And so I was so gassed that game. It was just, all right, two two plays on the offense. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, like, you, it, you did, there was no rest time. There's no rest time. It was just no. on, off, on, off. Um, yes. Do you find, when like, when you got your concussion, I don't know how bad yours was, but would you feel, like, really different for a while? Yeah, the next three days, I felt like I like had the worst hangover of my life. Yeah, that was like me too. Um, the The night of that game, I got drunk, and um, <laughs> it was like oh, I, I was like literally like dulling out the pain that night. Right. But um, I knew I woke up the next day, and I I didn't even really drink that much. Like probably like five or maybe like six or seven shots worth. So right, that's, it, that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't drink when you have a concussion <laughs> because it dehydrates your brain, and your brain's already messed okay. up. So yeah. it's like it's like two and two is ten, and I woke up probably one of the worst hangovers I ever had in my life. Wow, that's horrible. Yeah, it's horror awful. Because I didn't realize I didn't figure out I had a concussion till like Tuesday, and we played on a Sunday. Okay, and did like you talked to any coaches? Did you take time off? Oh yeah, I took. I think I took uh three weeks well like two and a half okay yeah but um because i only realized i was in like i think it was a multimedia course and i was like on the computer and i was like why is this computer hurting my eyes so much and then i like kind of added everything up and i'm like oh crap (laughs) we're making a really good psa for playing football right now yeah i mean it's (laughs) fun it's really fun and it's so it's so good for you but it's so much fun and like the camaraderie yeah. the kind of thing. That's a, a big part of it. That's what it's all about. But especially when you're on a team that doesn't do very well. <laughs> hey, we had our uh, highlights. Yeah, we, we, we had a 500 season. We went, you know. Yeah, we went, e- actually went, we went above even with the playoffs. Oh, that's true. Cause we were in like a, what was it like? Consolation playoffs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, but we crushed it. 30 we did. to 8. 38 final score. Yeah, that was a good last game. Yeah. Yeah, but oh god, dude, concussions like I felt so off for like literally weeks afterwards. Yeah. It, yeah. It, a different it, person kind of thing. Yeah, like I was a lot more moody and uh like I couldn't focus a lot. So, wise words to the listeners, make the hit, don't get hit. Exactly. Be the aggressor, not the Yeah. Not the taker. Exactly, unless you're into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it can really, it can almost like depress you. Oh, absolutely. Like, actually, another relation to Joe Rogan, but he was he had a guy on his podcast, and he mentioned like it can affect your pituitary gland, or no, not your pituitary gland. That's for reproduction. Your what's the third eye one that we were pineal gland. Your pineal gland. Yes. Yes. That one. And that affects, like, I think, hormones. Okay. I, I don't know. I, again, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. But it can affect your hormones. And the other thing I noticed, which really related to that, is, like, I do yoga. Yeah. And it just destroyed my yoga routine. Oh, that sucks, man. Because, like, like, when you do yoga, like, you get, like, really, um, like, you focus on that. Like, you try to focus on your third eye. Yeah, you get high, I find. You can i know yeah hey want to hear it i don't know if i should say that oh uh, i will Isn't anyway. it, uh, it's probably fine go ahead yeah i'm retired now okay so um back in the day when we had yoga I know what you're gonna say i already know what you're gonna say <laughs> I, I re- yes so me and uh another senior on the team Does his first name go- start with d his first name starts with D. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, we would uh, go to the park uh, right before, like, b- between school and yoga. And we, you know, smoke a little weed kind of thing. And then we show up just out of our minds. <laughs> just go, go in the corner and do our yoga thing. And it was actually so sick every single time. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Highly recommend I, it. I, I remember that because there was one time I was beside you. And, yeah. like, you, like, put your arm up in the air. You're like, whoa! <laughs> I was like, oh my god, Aiden's high. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and then we went to ski team practice afterwards. 
Oh yeah, that was fun too. And then this year you got drunk at ski team. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can say that too since I'm retired. <laughs> yeah, and graduating. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Actually, the the ski coach called me out, and you were there. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny night. <laughs> yep, that was funny. I was I was on blades, so I wasn't even doing it right. We we're supposed to be like trying to um, better our technique through the course, and so I was on these tiny little skis being a retard. I, I'm sorry <laughs> if that's offensive to some people, but. I just have poor choice of words. Anyway, um, I ended up losing one of my like little blade things, and it went right by the coach. And so I went back to to the bottom of the co- course, and um, he's like, oh, "What did he say to me? Do you remember?" He uh, he's like, "Do you have gum?" Oh yeah, do you have gum? And I'm like, "No, do I need it?" And he goes, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, because and also I never. I never found the blade. <laughs> yeah, he lost his ski. He just he just yeah. threw it down the hill and it just slid down and it was never found. Actually, I didn't throw it. I took off them for some reason at the top of the hill. And, oh yeah, yeah you're gonna slide down on your belly. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So I guess people who don't understand skiing, like to any other sport, imagine this: it's the the your final practice before your like biggest competition of your sport so like if you're from the states like maybe like a state i don't I don't know how it works in the states but like we have provincials which is like the entire province or the equivalent in america would be a state is competing against each other so it's our final practice and aim gets drunk before it <laughs> and yeah. and we win by like a minute like we got <laughs> first we were really like first second third fourth fifth or something ridiculous Right, and like a minute is significant when you're talking about four people's total times going down a 30-second course. Yeah, so <laughs> a 30-second course, and we managed to get a minute over everybody. Like, just doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but oh, it's so bad. We were just we were just all stars. We we killed him, man. We actually did. We got a sweep too. Like, we can't underplay this. We got first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Oh, I'm oh. being interrupted. Yeah, that's all right. I, Alyssa, I can't talk right now. <laughs> that's your bitches, sister. Man. Yeah. Man, she's like, is she still in love with Ellen? She's crazy. What? What's What's with Ellen? Like, why, why does she like her so much? I think because she's a lesbian. That's honestly my theory. And I mean, I don't judge her for it. In fact, I encourage it. Cause okay. Maybe, in my opinion, uh, the human figure, or sorry, the female figure is the ultimate figure. <laughs> I would agree with that. Definitely. Not I'm that sure. I would know. And I'm sure, yeah, not that you know. <laughs> but I'm sure a lot of girls deep down agree with me. I think so. Yeah, in case there's any girls listening to this. <laughs> um, Probably like... One? One, four, <laughs> maybe five percent. All of them, maybe. Not many. Nah. <laughs> um, so the other thing we were going to talk about, which I don't know really much about, but you, you, uh, we'll kind of just briefly mention it is chemtrails. Chemtrails. So I need an explanation on these chemtrails. So there's like a conspiracy going on, right? And it's that the government they're spraying aluminum, like Alex Jones, we got aluminum in the oil, <laughs> Holocaust kind of stuff, and uh, they're saying like it, it's a mind control method or whatever but in reality what those planes are shooting out it's just a lot of pollution it's contributing oh, to man-made global okay. change and all that so it really distracts from the real problem which is pollution um and when people throw in these weird arguments about how they're controlling our minds and uh, the new world order oh that's I, I can see how that would happen so basically there's pollution from the planes and people are saying that they're intentionally putting in these things to control people when really it's just like a like an off put from the um exactly the exhaust from the planes precisely yes okay and like there is chemicals in there definitely but there's fucking chemicals in everything there <laughs> are dude there's chemicals in everything absolutely it, it sucks like i look at, i always look at this when i go to the grocery store Pretty much everything you eat has chemicals, you know? You can go through all, like, the not-so-healthy foods, like the chips and the pop and the candy, 100%. Organic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, all that unhealthy food, absolutely, there's going to be some bad chemicals in it for you, like aspartame yeah. if you're getting your diet Pepsi or whatever. 
Yeah. Then you can kind of mint. Yeah. And then you can kind of move into like a healthier thing. Like let's say like your meats and your cheeses and your milk and that kind of stuff. Sure. And Canada's a lot better regulated like specifically with their like meats and their dairy than like America is. Yeah, like the McDonald's, the, uh, like those chicken nuggets, like they got the pink goop in the US, but allegedly we don't have the pink goop. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly. Because I I know um, America is really like lax on their milk and there's like, I think it's RHGB that they put in it, which basically makes the animals make more milk so that, you know, they make more profit. But it's Ugh. not very good for you. And I'm not saying like Canada is like perfect because I'm sure there's chemicals in our, definitely in our animals and definitely in our like milk and all that crap. But I think it's less than the States. And as well, I think it's like the UK and everywhere's in Europe kind of has banned a lot of that stuff as well. Good. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's crazy about America. Like I'm taking global oh, economics God. this right, semester, right. which you, you took last semester. And like, right. like there's a, like we watch a lot of um, documentaries. Left wing propaganda. Definitely left wing um, type videos. Maybe not. Pro- propaganda might be a little extreme, but uh, yeah, <laughs> but truth, but one sided truth. Kind yeah, of thing. that's the thing is it's very one sided, and you realize like wow, America like they really um, like their laws or, or their. Oh, are you- not laws, but they're so, um, like there's no rules with anything, like no regulations in a lot of that kind of stuff. Sure. And sure. Uh, Short term interest. Yeah. That's, oh, that's scary. But, um, yeah. like moving even towards like your vegetables, like they put pesticides on your vegetables. So, right. That, um, makes me think, what do you think or what do you know of GMOs, gen- genetically modified organisms? Um, I definitely don't think it's a like one sided area because like there's, there's some people who will say, Oh, you can't tamper tamper with vegetables. Oh no, they're, they're, it's going to like kill us all. And like, you know, Franken foods and all this stuff. And then there's other people who say there's nothing wrong with it. Don't be silly. And I'm kind of more towards that. There's nothing wrong, but I'm not a hundred percent towards that. Sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm in the same boat, but I'm I'm more like ninety nine percent. Like I'm I'm pretty convinced. Like I've heard some people talk about it and kind of like mm. totally bash all the claims about it. But mm. I mean, you never really know. Yeah, and I don't think anything is ever really like a hundred percent. This is this, you know. Yeah, and t- until we get like I don't know a few like hundred years of like analyzing what it actually does. Yeah. It's gonna take a while. Cause, um, yeah. like we're going to miss out on so much advancement. I know. Well, I mean, Hey, I, th- I don't know. Cause maybe we're, we'll live till we're like 200. Whoa. What if we like just get in the age gap where they're like, come up with this crazy technology. Exactly. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause it's technology is just going that up and up and up. That would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Exponentially. It's like, what's cool about right now is that you're seeing like, what's not like like when you were like five there wasn't a lot of technology like there was the internet but there wasn't a lot of internet you know no one it wasn't as big as it is today yeah and now you know you're seeing everything growing so rapidly so when you're like 60 you're going to be able to compare to that and now it's going to be ridiculous because even for a 60 year old today it's ridiculous you know back then they didn't have phones now we have phones like what is it going to be like in a while definitely i think we got really lucky in the year that we were born because like we were born with vcrs and like before that kind of thing so like we saw the whole progression of technology from like the very beginning where the exponential curve kind of just took off you know yeah yeah exactly that's what i mean that like like if i'm sure you you know because you're a, a great calculus student but like you know the curve like it starts off like with that the asymptote, which like like a horizontal straight line, and there's not a lot of growth, and we're like at the point where it just starts to kind of kind of loop up, I think. Definitely. So that's pretty scary because like we think we're we might be halfway, but in reality we haven't even left like the point one on the y-axis. Yeah, exactly. I feel bad for whoever doesn't know math. And can't follow along. <laughs> I think that shouldn't be too hard. The y-axis. Maybe asymptote, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's okay. For those who do 
know they'll feel special. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A gold star for you, listener. <laughs> <laughs> you get a gold star. Yeah. Um, oh, one second. Uh, I had a topic here, but my phone's messing up. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, right. So what what year do you think you should have been born in? If you could pick, or if you could pick a year, would you just stay now or? Well, uh, hmm. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Maybe can I pick the future? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go with three thousand. Three thousand, really? Do you think we'll still be alive then? Yeah. Well, do I get to have like my experience in this generation, or do I have to grow up then? You just grow up. Pretty loaded question. Yeah, you had to grow up. Okay. All right. Well, I guess. Say. Sorry, you're kind of cutting out. Jeez, this is very difficult. It'd be better if I had a timeline of what's going to happen. You know. Yeah, if you could see what's going to happen, that's true. Yeah, that's a weird like thing to say. Three thousand, like twenty ten. You know what it is. That's three thousand. So long ago. It's going to be in so long. But um, I don't know, because like a part of me is like. Oh, it'd be cool yeah, to be in the seventies really... or maybe the sixties when there was like a lot of like sick music and and yeah, it seemed yeah. quite happy and now but yeah, then, innocence. Yeah, but at the same time I feel like that was a time where there was so much like what's nice now is that you know if someone is lying, I feel a lot yeah. more. It's a lot yeah. easier to tell nowadays. Definitely, but let's go back into the future. We're going to know for sure when somebody's lying. Like, there won't be any lies. Like, this goes to Joe Rogan's kind of theory that um, there won't be any secrets. Like, yeah. everybody will be spying on everybody and everyone <laughs> will know everyone's conversations. And that's, that's the only true way to achieve happiness. That's going to be weird, man. It's yeah, going to be really it, weird. We'll see some freaky stuff. And yeah. so will the listeners. You know, everyone's, everyone's fetishes are going to come out. <laughs> people will see that i'm not actually a virgin not the best not the best not the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i'm totally kidding guys <laughs> <laughs> hey there's, there's nothing wrong with pit, little piss porn it's not uh, not my thing but if it is i mean hey it doesn't bother it doesn't affect me so why should i care i guess that's a good you know it, yeah. it's funny but it's a little weird but you know you can poke fun <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched it except for E Fucked. That site's <laughs> crazy. That's a great website. Oh, my favorite website. I don't know if I say my favorite, but well, it's my home page. Is it actually? No. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't be surprised. Just... <laughs> wow, wow, right to the heart. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're. A... I really wouldn't surprise me. Um... Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the video? I know I posted it in our little Facebook group. We have like a group with a bunch of our friends in it. The one it's really cool guys. It's it's pretty pretty uh, legit. Underground. Yeah, <laughs> it actually is because it's a secret group. But um, sure, sure. It's this. It's like this super like hardcore anal video. Oh, oh the the double plunging. The the Rocky Balboa. Yeah, Rocky. The fit. Oh so it, a guy with I think latex gloves on punching a girl's butt, and is he's punching it, and his fist goes in every yeah. time. Just imagine someone like loading on a beanbag. Just boom, 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 yeah. Boom, boom. Like, um, there's one with a, like a lot of gummy worms coming out of the girl's <laughs> butt. Oh, I forgot that one. <laughs> and then the last one, which is debatably the worst, is um, it's like a girl has her whole arm up another girl's ass. And she's <laughs> poking up with her hands into her belly. Oh. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. It's it like a little baby just there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, like the other two are extreme. Definitely. But that's like gruesome that her whole arm is up there. And she's like, yeah, let me see your fingers. And it's like, oh, like that just makes me <laughs> Some people squeamish. are really fucked up, man. What? But hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Boat, whatever the hell you got, you're into. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, like I said, it doesn't affect you, so it shouldn't. You shouldn't hate on someone for that. True, that's my true. thing. Yeah, you really shouldn't hate on anybody until they give you a genuine reason. That's the thing is haters are... I mean, what's the point of haters? Like, there's... You gain nothing for being a hater. 
True. You know what I mean? Like if you're internet celebrity. <laughs> if you gain No, but I am your number one hater. Maybe actually. Yeah, I do. I'm pretty frequent. Yeah, you are. Yeah, in the live streams, in the comments, oh, anything. Yeah, you are in my live streams sometimes. Yeah. That's Did I get demoted mod status? Um oh, I don't I know. The hesitation. I I didn't demo I didn't intentionally demote you. Okay. Okay. Um, but I may like it may have happened because it does that sometimes, once right. in a while. So I I yeah. didn't do it intentionally. I'll tell you. That. I was just sad because I didn't see my crown when I logged in one time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it doesn't pop up right away. You have to comment a couple times. Oh, I see. That may have been it. Let's see. It. Um, prom is is soon approaching. Adroy. It's gonna be a good time. How hey, are we? Are we going golfing before? That's the plan, yeah. All right, sweet. I'm driving. The You're driving carts. the car? Okay. Carts. Okay, the I was carts. like, he's driving? Yeah. Really? No, I'm not driving. I'm <laughs> not legally. A hey, are you legally allowed to drive a golf cart drunk? Um, Ooh, tricky questions. That's a good question. I, Yes. Yes, Motor because... Vehicle. Of course. Yeah, I do. Okay, so I work at a golf course. There's a lot of people who go out on the course all day, and they just drink, <laughs> and it's it's nuts. <laughs> Oh, jeez. It's... Okay, so the most I've ever seen it from one cart was a guy had an empty pint... Well, it was two guys, but there was an empty pint and I want to say 11 empty beer cans in there, in like the back, like just stashed up. And um, I mean, like that's... You know, that's that's a pretty decent amount. So like half a pint in like six beer, like that'll get you pretty pretty hammered. Oh, yeah. But in the middle of the day on a really hot golf course like it, it like intensifies yeah because like you're all dehydrated mm. too exactly does that, does that make a difference i don't know if it makes you more um I drunk know if, if you have a, like a um less in your stomach it definitely will oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah girls i don't know why girls love to do that like they always end up throwing up i don't understand i don't understand like, the whole throwing up thing I Actually, I, I do understand it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I beg to differ. I, I don't know what it is about me, but I'm not a puker when I drink. You're and not a puker. I've, I've puked once, when, or actually twice. Um, wow. And one, I made myself throw up. And the other, I like, I, I drank like, like I, had, I just drank like a whole bunch of water. And then I started drinking beer. And I drank like six really fast or something. And like my stomach couldn't handle it all. So I just like puked it up. Wow. Yeah. Oh, like Evan in his cold shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a friend who was completely sober and he tried to shotgun a single cold <laughs> shot, which is 250 milliliters of beer. And he threw up. It's an extra 1% though. We'll it is an that. extra 1%. But, uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Evan. <laughs> Actually, uh, the other weekend, I think I want to say two weekends ago, I was over at his house and we were like, I want to say casually drinking, mm -hmm. but like it was more like casually getting fucked up. Okay. One of those. So we're just like chilling, just talking, hanging out. And like, you know, he has some cold shots. So he just kind of pops a hole in one, shotguns one, two minutes later, you know, another one. But it's so casual. We're not doing anything. And sure. I, I had some vodka and I'm just chase. I'm just doing shots straight. No chase. Nice. And just, just casual. It was the weirdest ta like thing ever. It wasn't like turn up. It wasn't like. What kind of vodka were you drinking? Um, Tito's. Tito's. I've I, never even heard of that. It is the best. It is. The best. I've decided it is the best vodka for a high school student. Okay. All it's right. it's thirty three bucks for a quart, so it's like five bucks more than the average quart in Canada. And, and what's the percentage? Forty percent. Forty percent. Good. Good. And it's it's like super smooth. Okay. Like, Interesting. Yeah, it's it's a lot nicer. Like you, you tend to not be very hungover after you drink it. Is it like Ciro, bro? Ciro, C Ciroc. A Ciroc, whatever it is. Yeah, that stuff. I have you no, ever had it? I've I've never even tried it. Like I, I'm just. It's like one of those Abercrombie and Fitch. Yeah. So I, just, I just stay away from it. I feel like it's some sort of like almost like it's cool to have Ciroc. Everyone's like, oh, I want to get Ciroc, bro. <laughs> That's what Grey Goose is for. Yeah. Yeah. Grey Okay, so they cost Ciroc and Grey Goose cost the same, right? I was under the impression that Ciroc was a little bit more. Okay. So there you go. At least 50 bucks a quart. 
Yeah. And that's outrageous, by the way. That is outrageous. Canada is very taxed. Some places like twenty bucks. In like some places like two bucks. Yeah, it's it's like a dollar a beer. Sometimes like fifty cents a beer. Yeah. Where we come from, it's like two dollars bottom line for a beer. That's in the store. Like if you go to the bar, it's like four dollars. Four or five, yeah. Yeah, I think like it's illegal to sell them under two fifty. Man. It's ridiculous. And that's I think that's a problem in Nova Scotia, like because there's a monopoly on that. Sure. I don't I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, monopolies are weird. Yeah. But especially when it's the government limiting your fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually um I was listening to again a Joe Rogan podcast. It's funny how that keeps coming up. Oh, with interesting. Um Graham Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> nice name, bro. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you never listened to him? No, I'm actually just looking on the list okay. to see where that was. He, uh, it was one. F- I want to say 143, and then he's been on a couple of times since. Oh, okay, that's a way back. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's I'm... considered to be one of the best ever. Oh, geez. It, it's got him and uh, then Duncan Trussell's on there as well. Oh, my favorite guest. Duncan Trussell's the man. I must add. I know. I love him. He's a genius. Yeah, but the it's re- it's a really cool thing because he's they're talking about like Egypt like Egypt and pyramids and all this stuff and he's like this he comes off as this really intelligent guy and then i think Joe Rogan mentioned psychedelics and he says something that really like kind of stuck with me it was like like he said it's like um you're exploring your own consciousness and if a government can control you from doing that then you really have no freedom of all at all. If you don't have freedom over your own mind, how do you have any other freedoms? That's beautiful. And I thought like that really stuck with me. And like, again, it kind of ties into like same with alcohol. Like if you're gonna, and I mean alcohol doesn't really like explore your consciousness, but um, like I just thought that that was a really <laughs> interesting way to put it. That like you know it might. It, I would argue that it, you can explore your consciousness while on alcohol because you can kind of look at what you're like on alcohol and if you have kind of like shut in problems when it comes to social situations you can really like act on that and kind of take it into the r- real life when you're sober again maybe for some people but maybe not you know yeah i guess you're right um the thing i always say about alcohol is when you're just drunk and don't care about anything y- you see someone's true intentions. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, because not, there's no like social, you know, parameters or anything that you have to follow. You don't care. You you just don't care about anything like <laughs> I that. I love it. Yeah. So you're just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna do what I want. Like, I don't care what anyone thinks about me. It, you're almost. It's almost kind of selfish in a way. Oh, you're you're yeah. thinking, but it's just like nothing matters so like what you do when you're drunk is kind of almost your true you when there's no like sense behind it so like if someone says oh i'm sorry i cheated on you i was drunk well (laughs) you probably were thinking of likely i think you're probably thinking about it when you were sober and you just you didn't care when you were drunk so you did it yeah i i just a quick interruption of where this conversation is going but do you think it's possible to be monogamous as a man? Okay, that's, that's a bad question. Do you think it's possible to be monog- monogamous in your own desires and thoughts? As a man? Yeah. I really don't. No, I really too. don't because we're not, des- like, we're not designed for that. Yeah, I think because like you're always going to check out a girl's ass when she walks by. Yeah, and yeah. the thing is, is you are designed for that. It's not like, oh, you're a your bad boyfriend or whatever <laughs> it's the only reason why we're here today exactly because we're we're programmed like that we're programmed to want to have sex with as many girls as mm-hmm. possible mm-hmm. and yeah mm-hmm. you know you can control not cheating on someone but you really can't control those thoughts and if you do you're gonna go crazy i think yeah and so i guess if you can control those and not act on it and a woman recognizes that that's why it's so like valued that you don't cheat kind of thing, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. But yeah, no, for sure. Like people don't realize like, and, like you know, we try to be say, Oh, we're so cultured. Well, <laughs> we've only been cultured for like what, maybe a thousand years. Oh, 
Your uh, microphone cut off. Oh, cut out there. Sorry, I said like we've only been cultured for probably like maybe a thousand years if you really want to stretch it out and a thousand years ago we were not very cultured hmm I, that's an interesting thought because like i always think of the reason why we got anywhere is because we were cultured because we we're able to kind of like begin roots of language and stuff and I suppose like, so. tools like uh anywhere from like just holding a stick to turning it into a hammer kind of thing right but like think how long we've been on the earth for right like i guess there's different definitions of culture and so yeah. we're kind of mixing those up or i should say civilized how about oh, civilized okay. yeah 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 so like we've been on like i don't know like fifty thousand years like humans oh she caught out again oh we've like i want to say like modern humans have been around for like fifty thousand years where we really work like intelligent something's going on fifty thousand years humans on the earth for like fifty thousand i mean i know humans have been on for the earth for more than 50,000 years. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, it just cut out and the last thing I heard was 50,000 years. Okay, yeah. So humans have been on the earth for, let's just say, 50,000 years, cultured. Sure. Like, but it's been a lot longer than that, like millions of years oh, as oh. we've, you know, been be, being brought up. So... Oh, one sec, I have a visitor. Oh, all right. I can't talk right now. Oh, sorry. It was Alyssa again. She's crazy. <laughs> anyway, All right. go on. So, if, you know, like, we're still kind of animals in a sense. Like, yes, we're civilized, but we're, you know, like... We're absolutely animals. Not in a sense, we, in every sense, we're an animal. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. We are animals. Like, like, oh, no, we're humans. No, we're, humans are animals. Yeah. Like, are we, what are we, what are we then, plants? Have we evolved past animal? I don't know, maybe. I don't think so, because, like, we still have dicks and stuff. Exactly. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technology, maybe, but I think, like... Ooh. <laughs> I think technology could evolve into human. Whoa. Ooh, Ooh that's, Whoa. A, that's an interesting thought, but maybe. <laughs> would it be really human, though, because it wouldn't be made of, like... Well, maybe they would be made of flesh. Wouldn't that be stupid <laughs> if, like, technology got so advanced that... They they were able to just make like literally like literally make people, wow. like like out of technology. What if they can do that right now? I mean, they'd hide it. They have good reason to. Yeah, I mean, well, it wouldn't benefit us because why wouldn't we just make babies? Wow, this is so mind fucking. <laughs> Dude, I know it's it's some heavy stuff. I I knew we were gonna get into this some Joe some Joe Rogan type stuff. Yes, and we should. Everyone should. Like a lot of people are, they're afraid to engage in like deeper thought. I know, man. Like people, like when you think out of the side of the box like that, and you have these really random thoughts that you're not accustomed to, people want to say like, "Oh, that's a silly. Oh, you're crazy." But I embrace that. Like, yes, think... you're crazy for not embracing it. Exactly. Open your mind. Like, like whatever you know if if it has something to do with like just the way you, you're you treat people or whatever like just always think about things differently yeah totally and i really admire like your genuineness when with these thoughts because i i, I wasn't always a good person and it took me uh i like to think that this is the reason why, but psychedelics, they were, it was kind of like a, a reset button, almost like an eraser on like how I felt and perceived the whole world. But it was an eraser kind of like on a page with lead. So like some things kind of still stuck out and the important right. things that I had probably written over a couple of times that I knew were fact, those things started popping out a lot more. Ah, uh, man, that's so interesting that you say that. Yeah. Like it's really hard to describe to somebody who hasn't done them. Yeah, but... I've I've never done anything like like yeah, that. Just... And not that I like say like oh it's bad you're a druggie, which is something I've kind of learned in the past like really this year is that I don't think they're bad like I used to think. That's something I changed my mind about, but I've just yeah. never personally partaken. There's definitely different things that are worse for others. And what's funny is the worst ones are the ones that are the most legal. Yeah. Like when you talk about opiates or uh, cocaine, like there's medical cocaine. Is there? Uh, yeah, for dentistry. Ah, that's interesting. 
Yeah, like uh, if you've ever been like numbed, like at a specific spot, that's cocaine. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. I knew I knew yeah. it wasn't an anesthetic, but um, yeah, like I think I really, I mean, I mean, meth is meth is definitely a pretty bad drug. That the, it's legal. <laughs> well, or a- amphetamine. Amphetamine, legal. yeah. Yeah, it, it meth is a little more extreme, I think, but. Right, it's just a different form of amphetamine. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? But, like, I really think that opiates are probably one of the most dangerous drugs. It, it's the most dangerous drug out there. And you I ask, like, any, uh, like, uh, people in that kind of field dealing with people with addictions and stuff, it's the worst thing. So a little advisory for anybody, like, even if it's just grandma's pain pills, don't get into them. Yeah, I think that's, that's it because I'm not saying – they should be illegal because I don't want to go through surgery without morphine exactly. or you, whatever. You need them, man. Yeah. You need like morphine is a good thing. It's I'm glad that we have it as a society, but it is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the thing with, um, opiates is I've like, I've never like taken anything extreme. I've had like, um, I've had codeine, which gives <laughs> like not really anything. It, it, numbs your pain quite well but yeah yeah it's like Tylenol or Advil yeah um in my experience yeah um just extreme that but like basically what I like is it's very um soothing kind of like calming I think people say when I got my wisdom teeth out like I was like wow this is the best shit I ever had (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) like I think as Evan like he had morphine when he got his wrist um he broke his wrist and he had to get it like broken again. And he right. said like, he's like, Oh my God, this shit's amazing. And like the thing with it is in comparison to other drugs, like I like to say alcohol is alcohol is it's, it, it has its own protective thing about it is the hangover. Yeah, so you get drunk definitely. and you're all happy. The next day you're hungover and you're like, oh, I don't really feel like drinking straight away again. Yeah, I saw a good metaphor for that. It was um, drinking is like borrowing happiness from the future. Ah, that's a very <laughs> interesting way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. That's yeah, that's an interesting way to put, to put it. And um, I feel like maybe opiates are a very, very extreme version of that. Definitely. And I think that's partly why it's accepted because like, it's not all, oh yeah, you're just having fun. Kind of like with weed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And like coming back to that whole thing about psychedelics is I think I haven't done like a lot of research, but they, I know in the States, are they considered like the worst drugs of all? To a lot of people because propaganda exists and the yeah. whole lot of- but, and like, then, on the schedules, like, Schedule 1, 2, and 3, right, aren't so they number Schedule yeah, 1? weed and, like, LSD, peyote, ecstasy, like, all those things, they're all on Schedule 1. Like, no medicinal uh, value, even yeah. though um, I think a majority of states recognize uh, medicinal marijuana. It's still scheduled as uh, Class 1. Yeah, and then, like, meth and, like, all these other things aren't, like, Schedule 1 with absolutely no. There's a little bit to it, isn't it? Yeah. The sole exception is crack cocaine. <laughs> is that, is that, I'm, I would, I assume I've never heard a, uh, medical use of <laughs> crack cocaine. <laughs> hey, man. Medical crack. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? But I've, I've listened to a lot of like Joe Rogan stuff where they talk about those type things like psychedelics, um, like where people go down to the, the rainforest and do ayahuasca. Oh yes. Yes. And that was actually something that like, I like because I used to think like straight out the gates, drugs are bad. Don't do drugs; you'll ruin sure. your life. Sure. And um, you know, like alcohol, weed, it's whatever. You know, you do what you want to do, makes you happy, go for it. Sure. But I was really like, yeah, like you know, psychedelics are definitely just they're bad for you because that's what I've been told. Sure. And I was listening to an episode of Joe Rogan where they were talking about ayahuasca, which I had no idea what it is. It's like this, it's like a plant and a vine, and you mix it up, and it makes you see crazy stuff yeah and um it was amber lyon was on the podcast and she was talking about like she was like super anxious had all this anxiety and like she just like super super um (laughs) just like messed up and like she was just in this terrible spot and she went down and she did this and she said medicine and i was like oh wow this sounds like such a beneficial thing right and then 
like a little bit later, I was like, oh, that's drugs. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like that's drugs. Yes. And I was like, oh, wow, maybe I was wrong about this whole thought process. And I was like, oh, okay, so maybe there are some benefits to these things. And it's just like that, like where you, you've been told something all your life and you're like, oh, maybe not. Yeah, so it is true because you do see like the crack and the cocaine, like people blowing all their money on that. Yeah. And like the meth and stuff. And that's really the severe things. But because those things exist, and when the laws were written and the propaganda was created, we didn't really know about all these other things. So they just kind of got the blanket over it, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, so um, going back to psychedelics, you mentioned that you see a bunch of funny stuff. And well, yeah, you, I, I said that kind of poorly, I think. But. Right. It, so I just wanted to touch on it. So basically, there's like three parts to it there's like the physical thing where like you kind of feel like your whole body is pulsing kind of thing yeah it depends on what you're doing of course but um that's pretty common and um then there's the like way you see things and hear things they're a little altered especially um the seeing part because you'll see like really intense geomet geometric path patterns okay but a common misconception is that you'll see a purple elephant or a pink dinosaur here or there kind oh. of thing like that doesn't happen like what it is it's just like kind of when you close your eyes and you press against your eyes that's what you see yeah yeah and but of course varying with your dose and all that jazz yeah but um then there's also the mind fuck so a lot of people call it different things and i call it the ego death so it oh, breaks, yeah it breaks down all of your like opinions and everything and it kind of reduces it everything to kind of fact and like your your uh i don't know primal fact and primal this primal that like everything relates to how you're a an animal it's really hard to explain to someone who's never done it but yeah for those who are listening to it and know the experience they're like yes <laughs> Yes. So like when you talk to someone who uh, the term is psychonaut, like yeah. a psychedelic astronaut, yeah. when you like have a connection with someone and you're like, yeah, man, I know what you're talking about, but not so intense. It's like, <gasps> kind of <thing>. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. So because I've, I've heard this theory tossed around, do you think that they are primarily legal because they kind of open up your mind to a lot of that sort of knowledge? Right. So it, it's definitely knowledge and it's quite a learning experience and it breaks down a lot of things, especially your ability to um, absorb propaganda in the way that the people publishing it want you to absorb it. Yeah. So you start looking at literally everything differently, but everything with a much more positive light. Like you, I notice I control anger, like I seemingly have no anger anymore. And, um, like I'm able to look at things happier now, like looking at horizons and stuff. Like, look. oh, you cut out. Like driving back from Stellarton or something, I'll just be like, out and like that's a that's a big thing for me. Just just you kind of appreciate stuff more. Definitely, definitely. That's really interesting, dude. Um, because I I read a study that said um, I think it's whatever's in mushrooms. Um, psilocybin. Yeah. Um, it said like. It, it, there have been studies that showed it reduces the feeling of negative emotions in the body. Oh, you're my cut up. Oh, it said um, it reduces the feeling of negative emotions in the body or negative feelings. Sure. So, like, while you're in the trip, like, especially if it's your No, it was like, it was like afterwards. Right. So, you'll have, okay. Okay. Try and re explain that because it cut out twice. There. Okay. <laughs> um, it was saying that they did a study on people and it said that there were, like long lasting positive effects basically okay yes absolutely 100 percent changed my whole life yeah it's amazing recommend it to everybody but um yeah like people like with post-traumatic stress disorder they'll do that like war veterans and stuff and like you can look it up on youtube all the testimonials of people especially yeah. with Alaska too yeah that's the other thing is people who have been very damaged from war yeah yeah so i mean it's all very interesting to me. It's very like, whoa, like when you just almost have sort of like an epiphany 
oh yes you know it's like oh shoot maybe like because like what i was talking about before like when you you just assume something is what it is and you don't really question it sure and i try to be i try to question things like if someone tells me something that i don't really know i should say okay well you know is that true or is that not sure yeah and also it changes your kind of openness towards new information because like people kind of think that they've got to figure out kind of thing and for me it's changed okay let's listen to some right-wing people what truth did they have in their arguments kind of thing and so instead of just attacking them and oh no this is right kind of thing it lets you kind of understand and retort back a little more efficiently right just to just having an open mind is what it's all about. Oh, I think you're cutting out right now. Yeah, you did. Okay, yeah, I say it, it's just about having an open mind. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you go through your life thinking, I'm right and everything I've been told is right, <laughs> I don't think you're, like, you're not, it's not going to go very well for you. And it, why Why should it if you're not challenging, um, you know, like con- the consensus consensus of of what people say is so yes it's very important to humble yourself yes be yeah. humble and understand okay what i think maybe it's wrong you know okay i think sure. i think this is right but you know i be mean open it, to criticism yeah exactly and be wary of cultural consensus is a big thing mm-hmm. like if people don't say like if everyone thinks something is true don't say like i'm not saying like oh no you're all wrong but be wary of it and understand that maybe this is something that like there's like some media or something that says this and maybe it's not true just be wary of it yes that's that's really important to keep in your mind yeah that what you're being told may yeah critical or may not. thinking exactly yeah. exactly so that's about an hour. I think we'll wrap it up there. That was awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. That was a very, uh, very, very interesting conversation. I think. Yeah, we- let's do it again sometime. I would love to, man. Sweet. All right, cool. Uh, that Everybody, was. Everybody, uh, friend me on Facebook. Oh, you right. Can find me on MySpace. Yeah. What a... that jazz. Uh, uh, I don't want any stalkers. Do you want? No, you don't want me to say your, your Twitter. If... Uh, go ahead. It's Aiden Roy, A I D A N R O Y. All right, I can link it if you want. If you want to get some right, some cool. sweet followers and all yeah, that stuff. I'm getting so famous tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that was uh, Smith Squad Podcast episode ten. Aiden Roy, uh, thank you. Peace Bye, out, everybody.